Hello YouTube. Welcome back to Nutkin Farm. I'm standing uh, on block one looking over the farmhouse and in the very far end of the picture, you might need to see it on a big screen, is uh, a lighter area and that's actually the top of my spare paddock, which I've got a family friend Dave helping slash um, for me. And um, yeah, it's uh, quite a work in progress because the grass up there has been very thick and it's sort of all been turned into stubble over the last week. Haven't quite finished yet and I want to give you a video of that paddock because that's a potential area for future plantings. But in the meanwhile, it's late winter 2021, end of, um, end of July and um, it's yeah an absolutely beautiful period on the farm. It's uh, very inspiring to get out there and do some work because the days aren't hot yet but um, there's you know an increasing amount of sunlight around and you know the season's sort of just starting. So here's here's a bit of a comparison for you. Here's the flowering that's developing on some of the trees. It's one of these varieties that I wish I could tell you what it was but I can't but there's a, a, a reasonably heavy load of flower on despite the fact that there was in a lot of these trees out of season flowering that in a few cases is already turning into nuts so it's one of those you know it's one of those sort of mixed seasons where I'm not quite sure what's going to happen I don't think the agronomists are quite sure what's going to happen but look at that there's some baby macadamia nuts which really are turning into nuts before there should even be flowers and so there's a obviously a little balance to be struck there and and on other trees there are still nuts particularly the a16s there's still nuts that are yet to fall so it does mean a couple of things for farmers you've got to balance what you're going to do with these baby nuts that are on the trees which you know my agronomist does think will turn into crop uh, versus all this beautiful young flower and there's even a bee looking for some early pollen so you can see a mix of old and young flower right on the one tree and I've you know not been at this many years this is really my third spring and I've not really seen that kind of flowering on the trees it's it's clearly going to be a decent year for flowering but what do we do with the um, almost two-stage flowering we've got so there's a plan at the moment that does involve possibly a dual spray um, there is um, a need to protect the flower from lace bug which is the pest that eats at the base of the flower, not the flower itself, but it eats at the base of the flower and cause damage to the flower raceme. And you can see potentially a little bit of damage there. The blackened end suggests that that's lace bug damage on a, on a young flower, and you don't want that because it stops nuts from developing. But also, for the baby nutlets that are on the trees, a suggestion that we might spray for macadamia seed weevil which is the pest that can get into the young nut before the shell hardens. These babies here, they've got um, no real problem at all. Um, I uh, was prompted to come back into block one actually by the episode five of the Macadamia show with, uh, with Matty Kelby uh, because I was so impressed with the state of his babies and um, some of my babies I'm almost equally impressed by. The 788, which won my baby parade last year, is now, let's see, let's, oh, look, that's seven, seven feet easy, um, over seven feet, and that was planted in autumn 2020, if I recall correctly. Um, so the 788's proving a, a, a massively vigorous variety, others not so much. But anyway, uh, back onto the topic. In this strange sort of early spring, we're looking at protecting these flower racemes. And again, I don't know what this tree is, but it's got a hell of a lot of flower coming on and um, protecting this baby crop. What would you spray in this sort of a situation? Well, um, I last year used a product called Transform, which is good in that there's 
very little effect on beneficial insects. It's a systemic spray which stays in the system of a plant and um, attacks sap suckers like lace bug. It doesn't get into the pollen of the plant, which is what the bees want, and uh, and it doesn't uh, doesn't therefore harm them. But if you um, if you look if you take a look at that product, it's it's certainly newer. It's very expensive. But it also hangs around in the tree for a fair while so that these baby flowers can get the benefit of it um, several weeks after spraying. That's kind of important if you've got this extended flowering period. The other way of doing things, well, there's a couple of other ways of doing things. You could spray something shorter, shorter lasting, or you could spray the really toxic stuff, diazinon, although I suspect this could be the last year diazinon's permitted on macadamia orchards. Diazinon is a fairly, fairly tough organophosphate that basically kills anything on the plant, bees included, for about two weeks, uh, simply by being surface toxic. And um, farmers have previously justified spraying that on macadamia trees on the basis that bees aren't foraging yet, so you won't really kill very many bees. This season, I don't think you can make that argument because you've got existing flowers and, of course, the bees don't know to hold off while you spray. And, you know, these existing flowers are targets for bees. So that's one thing. But what, do we, what else do we do when spring comes early? What, what other responses should macadamia farmers make? Well, I've received my nutrition plan from the agronomist and one thing we've decided to do is bring forward some of the feeding. We know we have to work on pH, not in this block. In this block, the pH is perfect and the trees clearly love it. But the older blocks, which are flowering well as, as well, need some more pH, but we're also bringing forward the manure run. So my manure pellets, which I did last year, will now be the first part of my fertilising program for this season. And the Echo Growth granular feed will um, we'll follow that up. Why? Well, a couple of reasons. One is we expect a wetter than normal spring, according to the Bureau of Meteorology. And two, by feeding in the organic matter now, you're providing some boost for nut set on these little baby flowers and you're also providing a decent boost um, to the tree when it's uh, when it starts forming its 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 nuts uh, any manure product you might feed a plant you've got to basically allow a month before it starts delivering nutrients chemical fertilizers of course quicker on average the rock based mineral fertilizers like echo growth can take even longer uh, for some of their nutrients, particularly the phosphorus, to actually get through to the tree. But uh, yeah, in this particular season, we've thought it out. Um, if you're a macadamia farmer yourself, I suggest discussing your plan with your agronomist. Develop it, develop it with him. Don't just receive it from him. Ask questions. Um, do the homework with him, because my plan has... In, in, its, in its final form, changed quite a bit from having discussed it with the agronomist um, compared with what the standard recommendation might well have been. That is for the echo growth to come first and the manure and everything um, to come next. Um, other than that, there's still harvest happening and I'll be getting my little harvester out and scratching around these nuts that are on on the ground there, obviously not wanting to disturb the flower. Um, certainly judging by what I'm seeing on the trees, next season will be better than the bit of a washout season that we've had. Um, although this block has always, uh, has always actually done better, um, at least in the last season, than it did, uh, than the older blocks did. So it's an interesting time to be a macadamia farmer. It's not a, sometimes it's a, it's a time where, you know, the farmer will go away on holidays towards the end of the harvest season. But this is a time I don't want to miss. What I want to finish with is the success of the ground cover program in this block because the clover I planted 
seems to be springing up really pretty much everywhere. It's not becoming the dominant ground cover, but it's becoming a substantial ground cover in the scheme of things. And it's delivering, well, what, what in some estimates in America, a field full of clover will give you something like 160 kilos of nitrogen, free nitrogen per hectare um, from just having that clover in the pasture. So, um, uh, hopefully the trees will have some of that to look forward to. Doesn't happen overnight, but the best things in a macadamia orchard don't happen overnight. They they come with um, with some years of effort. Anyway, that's my general farm update. I'll come back to you again in a week or so and uh, give you some more information. Thanks for watching this morning. Bye for now.